I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association and this week I'm going to be uh, reviewing the installation of the MFJ 4603 Windows pass-through unit. I've got a nice window here but I've got to get the cabling that's going to be coming from the antennas on my newly erected tower into the shack so that I can get on the air. I need to do it safely. That's what's coming up this week on Elkara Ham Radio. Alrighty, well let's take this out of the box and let's see what the MFJ 4603 comes with and how to get it installed. Alright, <laughs> after a little bit of work, I'll be darned if it didn't fall down. <laughs> Alrighty, we've got some insulating tape here, or some foam insulation. Now this can go on the sides, across the top, that sort of thing. Uh, depending on the type of window that you have, you might not need this top, bottom, sides. Uh, you might only need it in certain areas, but uh, there's a lot of it uh, in here. Plus, it looks like we've got some grommets in here as well for some of the, the feed-through, especially for maybe the, uh, the rotor cable. I'm going to have a rotor on the uh, tower as well. That needs to be fed through. Got a piece of wood here. My understanding is they use cedar for the wood. Cedar is naturally bug resistant. And uh, one of the things you certainly could do to make this prettier is to stain it. For this project today, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna try to get it installed in the window and I might think about staining it a little bit later. But uh, smaller piece of wood here. Then we've got Dick's bigger piece and the uh, bubble wrap here is protecting the uh, connectors on both sides. So let's, uh, let's take off the bubble wrap and let's see what we can see. Okay, so one of the interesting things about this, and I did uh, some research on this before I purchased it, is depending on how your window is set up, uh, the way this is uh, actually installed on the piece of wood is you're gonna have more wood on this top side what, when it's oriented in this direction, and a little less wood on the bottom, but I can just as easily flip it around, and I'm gonna have the thicker part of the wood on the bottom and the thin. And the, the way they have uh, printed this is you've got the same information on the top or the bottom. Now, this is showing the UHF connectors. There's four of them across here. And uh, what else do we got here? We've got our uh, N connector. We've got an F connector over here on the far, uh, my left, your right, uh, for like coax, uh, regular coax. Uh, but N for UHF, we also have balance line and random wire connections. That intrigued me because I've got room here where maybe I, I connect something like that. We've also got the ability for power. Uh, you've got a black and red post here uh, for up to 60 volts DC, 30, 15 amps maximum. And then there's also a cable pass-through. We'd need to uh, loosen these two screws right here, but uh, a cable pass-through. And what this can be used for is for that rotor cable. Um, looks like I'm gonna be installing a Yesu rotor and we'll have another video on that a little bit later. Now that's just what's on this side. Uh, if we flip it over, you basically have the same stuff, right? We've got the caps on this end to protect, I'm not sure why we don't have caps on both sides, but uh, I'm sure the caps will be used on the outside. You could uh, orient this to where you want your connections on this side of the window, or you could flip it and have all of your connections on this side of the window and then put your caps on these connectors uh, so uh, to protect them so that uh, you can use them in the future. They don't get dust and wind um, But they do come with these protective caps the F doesn't uh, but the N and the four UHFs do 
So this is highly flexible, depending on your orientation within the window, uh, as well as you want the thinner wood on the bottom or the thicker wood on the bottom. And then the way, again, the way it's printed, um, you've got the same information, which I think is pretty interesting. In fact, let me loosen these little uh, butterfly wing nuts here, and uh, we'll be able to see the pass through a little bit better if I can loosen these up and then move that plate. And again, this can be for your rotor cable. Not sure if I got that loose enough just yet. There we go. So you can see we've got this diamond shape here, or square, <laughs> uh, where you can start passing that cable through. And you can make this pretty wide so you can get your cable through and then push it back to uh, kind of cinch it down. Uh, and you've got that on both sides so that you can get that cable through in both places. So I'll show you some close-ups uh, here in the next segment and uh, and then we'll talk about each of the uh, connectors and so forth and then uh, we've got to measure our window and see how much of this we might need to cut off because this wooden board is made this long on purpose. Um, it'd be pretty rare you'd have a window sash that's this, this long or has this length um, but we'll need to measure the window, the inside measurement and then we're going to need to cut this wood to fit. Alrighty, so we've got our screen out. This is a, a brand new shack, so this is nice and clean. Um, what we want is that piece of wood to be the length of this sash here. Uh, and you'll notice that we've got this, this much higher lip. We want the wood up against that. And we also have this lower lip down here on the front. We won't actually be touching this, but this is typically what the screen will actually be sitting in between in this gap right here and this lower one. We, we won't have the screen in, so we don't have to worry about that. The window also has a seal across the bottom. Now, not all windows will. So some of that weather uh, stripping that we saw that came with it could be on the top side, for instance. We won't need that. And you could put some on the bottom, probably won't need that. And you could also put some on the sides depending on the length that you cut it. I want this to fit in here pretty tightly. So I don't know that I'm gonna need the weather stripping all that much. Uh, and the great thing about keeping the wood here below this larger lip is again, the rain will come down and it, it'll actually just go out these two end points right here. Now, we want the wood right in between here. So right up against this taller lip. And what we need is the inside dimension of that. So what we're going to do is take our tape and we need to measure that. Because remember, the piece of wood is quite a bit longer than what you need. So I'm measuring, and this should be a pretty even measurement. These windows are made pretty, pretty much by the, the tens of thousands. So we're looking at about 35 and a half inches uh, on that inside uh, length there. And so we would probably cut our wood piece pretty close to that. But that's what you're measuring is this gap right here against this top uh, or this uh, higher uh, little plate there. And then eventually the window will come down and sit on top of it. And the wood won't have the ability to come in or out because it'll be in this gap. So uh, we need to measure our wood, measure it twice <laughs> and cut once. So in the next segment, I'll bring you back after we cut the wood and we're going to uh, See how we want it oriented. Remember, the connectors can be towards the left or they can be towards the right. Just depends on how you're gonna set things up in your shack. But I think I'm gonna have them oriented towards the left because a lot of my equipment's gonna be in this back left corner. So I'll see you in the next segment. Okay, so I've got the weather stripping in there. I didn't have the camera on for that, but uh, the backing on this tape is extremely, let me pick it up again, is extremely sticky, which is what you want, but it is, you want to be slow and deliberate as you're putting this in so that you get, you're going to get a nice seal here. Again, I did it on the sides and the bottom. I'm not going to do it on the top because the window itself has a little strip here. I may come back and do that later, but let's put it in and let's see what it looks like. Now, again, we're going to do the thicker board down because of this high lip here on the window so it doesn't interfere with the metal plate. So we're going to get this started. And again, the board fits within the slot of the window here. So you just want to kind of press some of that foam backwards and then press it down. There we go. And then just, you know, kind of put it in place. And that will prevent, you know, bugs, some of the elements from getting in. And then when we bring the window down, this black strip on the bottom of the window 
should compress right on the board just like that so now we've got that and then we can come back potentially with some of the weather stripping I'm, I'm not going to remove the adhesive, but I might put some weather stripping just in the gap here in the window because we do have a gap and we don't want the air to rush in to the shack uh, on those cold winter days. Um, but I'm just kind of showing you, you could put it to fill up that gap. I'm probably not going to use this tape. I'm probably going to use something else because of this uh, adhesive. Uh, I may just get some foam. Uh, also, you could use the remainder of your tape on the inside. Uh, you might want to do it on the bottom of this outside and on the inside. I'm going to uh, uh, ultimately do it on the inside. Again, maybe not with this because of this adhesive backing, but, uh, uh, but nonetheless, fill that gap on your window because you're going to get some air rushing up through there. Even though the two windows are close, it's not meant to be an airtight seal. So in the next segment, let's talk about that other piece of wood and how you might use that. Okay, I'm going to keep my voice down a little bit inside the shack because it is going to echo <laughs> but uh, this other piece of wood you might have been wondering what are we going to use that for well uh, if you go look at the uh, directions this is to create what's called a uh, security jam you're going to have a gap between the pass-through down at the bottom and so this creates a situation where the bottom part of your window can just be lifted up and from a security standpoint, not that they can't break a window and get in, you're just really trying to make it a little less uh, obvious, is you can put this piece of wood, what we'll need to do is measure the height that we need as we uh, come in here. We want it to fit into the slot here, again, where the window is. Um, um, and then we need to measure from there down to where the window is so that we have a nice tight fit. And, they won't be able to lift this up out of the way. At least that's the theory. I'm not terribly, um, you know, um, thinking that this is going to be a great solution, but, uh, but it's why they had the other piece of wood in here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it. Now, I think ideally, well, not even ideally, I think they give you this much wood. Uh, I could have one on this side and one on the other side. Um, so that's why they include this piece of wood. I'll go ahead and cut it to length and I'll show you installing it. I don't know that that would be a, a, a permanent solution. And again, it's not <laughs> for this shack, it's not going to be uh, full security because the windows are the weakest point uh, of the shack. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we'll give it a shot and uh, we'll cut it to fit. And then I'll bring you back and show you with this uh, being put, put in place. Okay, so we're back here with our cut piece of window stopper wood. The uh, measurement that I uh, that I got was for 13 and 5 16 inches. And uh, for those of you uh, elsewhere, you can plug that into your metric calculator. And uh, yeah, again, we're just trying to make it a little bit more difficult to open the window and also to keep the window down tightly against the window pass-through itself. From a security standpoint, it's not really that much security. But uh, will it fit? Well, of course, off camera, I've already put this on. But... Uh, Let's uh, put it in the track, and it should just slide right in, and it does. And if we try to lift the window, it won't let you. You want to keep it over here in this track because you get basically this track to keep the piece of wood in place. Now, if they jiggle the window, if you had the, the wood too loose, uh, they could jiggle this window and maybe get the piece of wood to fall out. But there is a slight lip up top and a lip here on the side to try to keep it from falling inward. So that, uh, that sh that'll work. And uh, that's primarily, again, we just want to keep it pretty tight against the bottom there. And now we're ready uh, to utilize our window jumper. Not only for the uh, antenna cable that's going to be coming into the shack over to the, uh, the corner here, but also for a rotator or rotor cable uh, on that pass-through over there. So that's the MFJ 4603 window pass-through. Uh, oh, and just before I forget, there were two grommets in the bag with the um, um, weather stripping. Those grommets are used with your rotor cable, and what you want to do is snip that those two grommets, one for the outside and one for the inside, and then put it around your cable. And the grommets have a groove in it so that when you tighten the little plate down at the bottom, it can go into that groove and pretty much make a tight seal around that cable. So you've got two grommets for your rotor cable also, which I'm not going to show in this video because we're not ready for the rotor, but may show you when we get ready to install that. 
I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I hope you like this demonstration of installing the uh, MFJ 4603 window pass through and uh, uh, we'll try to get the moss out of here and uh, 73.